everyone, just wanted to let you know if you're interested in seeing the full version of this analysis, which was originally over an hour and a half in length, you can find it on our Patreon, link in the description below. So if you want access to that exclusive content, consider supporting us. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So season two, episode 22, Lethal Trackdown. What do you remember of this episode? Um, what I remember is Ahsoka goes psycho, she follows Aura into a trap, she goes psycho some more, and then the episode ends. Uh, there's a bit more to it than that. No, oh, no, yeah. that is the breakdown of the episode. It's all there is. Uh, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> right. Let's get into this. Did we have anything in the argument against Ahsoka on this episode? I don't think we did. We missed so much, man, when we made that series. We missed so much. We have two points. That's it. Oh. Alright, so our points for Lethal Trackdown were that Ahsoka jeopardizes Plo Koon's mission to find information five times in a row, as we are told, with her lack of subtlety. In order to protect Ahsoka from the brunt of this criticism, the writers have Plo Koon wrongfully throw Anakin under the bus. She backs uh, right up into the people she is eavesdropping on, giving herself away and forcing Plo Koon to drop his own attempts at gathering information to help get her out of there. When he expresses disappointment, she reveals what she learned and he immediately her mistakes are forgotten. He pats her on the shoulder and praises her. Well done. Yeah, we missed so much. We need a, uh, a an opening quip. What's the quip for this one? The quip for this one is... And I quote, Revenge is a confession of pain. Revenge is oh, yeah, a dish right, because this cold. is supposed to relate to, to Boba. Oh, this is a good quote. This Here, this can be our... Uh, I've been looking at quotes. Um, <laughs> quotes are for dumb people who can't think of something intelligent to say on their own. That is perfect. That is perfection itself. That, that could literally just be our quote for the rest of the series. Yes, literally. Let's do it. That is our quote for the rest of this stupid series. <laughs> uh, but I like looking up quotes, so that, that's the problem with doing that. Shouldn't we be heading for the last place we knew Boba Fett was spotted? Why head to the one place we know he is not? I hate to rag on Plo Koon here, but that's kind of really dumb. Let's think about basic investigative skills. They always go to the, per the place where the person was last spotted because that's where you can pick up information most of the time and figure out where they're headed. E okay, I'm torn. Like, because you're absolutely right, right? Like, it's best to go to the last place they were so that you can find out where they went from there. But I guess his thing is, is maybe, you know, we'll pick up something randomly. I don't know. It's a cool sounding line, but you're right. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Oh, that's so frustrating. Because I was just like, well, that's cool. That's cool. And you're like, yeah, no, that's dumb. And I'm like, oh, shoot, it is. <laughs> oh. Because, yeah, it makes much more sense to be like, okay, he was here. Where did he go from here? Rather than like, well, we know he wasn't there, but maybe someone there will randomly be talking about information or have information about where he's gone. It's like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, major plot convenience right there. Well, I mean, they, they do say later on that, like, they had to make several stops. Right? Like, they're hopping all over the place, just hoping to run into some information randomly. It's and like, on their sixth stop, they find some? Yeah! That's way too convenient! Well, I mean, it's, it's not just convenient, it's also like, it shows that they're just wasting time. 
Yeah, let's that go too. over here. Well, let's let's go over here. Oh, maybe over here. Oh, what about over there? Spin in a circle and then point, and we'll go over there. Yeah, like how are like are they just like walking down the street, or are they like, well, we didn't find anything in this city, you know, block. Let's go to a different city block. Like, I don't even know. Like, how many love? Like this this. The entire planet is a city! You can't just go around randomly! But like, that's baloney for you, right? You pick the dumbest plan, but you make it sound cool, and then it just magically works out. Yeah. That- that is pretty much all of TCW. Yeah. Here's this incredibly unfeasible- is that a word? Unfeasible? Plan. But it sounds cool, so we'll just make it work, and then it'll be cool. Oh, yeah, so cool. Super uh. cool. Like, our, all of our characters look really dumb for going for these plans that are, like, completely illogical. Mm -hmm. But they're super duper lucky, so it always works out perfectly. And this is great writing here. Oh, Stupid yeah. characters who are really lucky. Yep. Yay. Yay! Would we just have it that they're going to the last place that Boba Fett was seen then? Because you could still have several s stops, right? Like, you know, they find one spot that he was, and then they go, you know, that person's like, oh, you know, they from here, they, you know, maybe, maybe Aura Singh, you know, started roughhousing someone, so they got kicked out of there, went down to this other place, right? Like, so you could still have it that they make multiple stops following this trail. It's not just like, oh, as soon as we get here, we find information that leads us directly to where they are. Like, you do have to kind of follow a trail. The second bounty hunter in the hologram is Aura Singh. Another bounty hunter? Like his father, Django Fett. Oh. Mm. That yes. tone! That tone oh, again! Why? Why? <laughs> And like, does that even make sense? That line? She's like, oh, another bounty hunter. Like his father, Django Fett. Like, what? What What are you saying? Like, I, I can't even understand the point you're trying to make. He's hanging out with more bounty hunters, like his father. Why didn't he just go to a completely different community after losing his father? You know, what the heck? What is that? Like, that just makes logical sense. His father was a bounty hunter, so he, you know, was familiar with the bounty hunter circles. That's his community. His father dies, so he's with another bounty hunter. It seems to me like they're just, like, exposition. In case the kids don't remember, or, you know, their parents didn't let them watch the movie, but they're letting them watch this, then, uh, just so you know, Boba Fett is Jango Fett's son and they're bounty hunters. And I guess you also missed the the last several episodes that were dealing with all of this information and repeated it over and over again. And like the narrators, it's like literally like, just in case this is the first time you're ever seeing this, here's the information that we've already told everybody else. I'd probably just take out that line then. Shut up, Ahsoka! We don't need you speaking! And again, yeah, it's like, like okay, again, because... why do they just give her lines for the sake of giving her lines? Literally! Just, here, what are we gonna have her say? I don't know, stuff some exposition in her mouth. Ooh, amazing character writing. Uh... And it and also it's like- like you said, because like you've you've been saying that you notice more and more that Ahsoka is oftentimes just used as a plot device. It's like this is supposed to be a strong female character. Excuse me, are you serious? She, she, right she's now? she's literally just a puppet for the writers to manipulate to support the narrative that they want. So in this case, she's she's a vehicle for exposition. In other cases, you know, she makes stupid decisions that are completely contradictory to decisions she made just, you know, five minutes or, you know, two episodes prior. 
Um, and without explanation, she just suddenly changes so that the plot will continue in the way that they want it to. So yeah, she's she's a plot device, or she's just, you know, a, a vehicle for exposition, or whatever have you. But, like, she's not a character. But I will say, um, getting back to what we're actually doing here, her reaction when they started to go down, it seems like this is her first time in the lower levels. But she's already been in the lower levels in lightsaber lost yeah no i don't know why the show like literally every single time ahsoka goes into the lo the lower levels the show act acts like it's, like the it's first her time. first time yeah like, what the heck it's not no shit i don't get it at all like because yeah when she goes down there in the season five finale again like and she goes down there several times in the season five finale and every single time it's like whoa all of this is new to me and again when you're you treat your character as this like flimsy you know blank slate that you just do whatever with then you you get stuff like this and it doesn't make any sense but they, they want to have these moments and so then they they're just like the screw characterization screw consistency here, let's put this moment in there. Do the writers, like, literally just write an episode and then completely forget about it the minute it's It been... seems like they write it, nobody else reads it, they just give it straight to the actors, and then, yeah, the person who wrote it, either if they, if they write another episode, they just completely forget this, or somebody else writes the next episode where... Ahsoka goes into the lower levels and they apparently have no idea what's happened previously. So then, oh, this is her first time. You know, like, there there literally must have been zero communication with this production team. Because this is just the so only way disgustingly this... sloppy and bad. Whoa. So basically, Dragon we're getting so rid of Ahsoka's so we're looking Whoa, for the lower levels reaction and her dumb lines. Seems this boy found himself in the care of at least one of Django's associates. So we're looking for friends of Django Fett, or places where they hang out. And to do that, we must go to the lower levels. The underworld. Most of this dialogue is just so obvious. They literally say the th same thing like three times. The other bounty hunter was Aura Singh. Oh, another bounty hunter like Django Fett. Yes, another bounty hunter like Django Fett. Ah, so we're looking for places where associates of Django Fett would hang out. Yes, that's what we're doing. It's like... <laughs> What is this dialogue? It's so bad! Oh! Like, I don't even know what to turn that into! <laughs> like, I feel like you could have skipped that entire thing, or literally just like, okay, yeah, show them flying into the lower levels. Like, I think they're just trying to hype up the lower levels. That's what is- Cause- Cause, yeah, that's that- The- the- the ending moment. They're like, whoa, there's the lower levels. And, then, and to do that, we must go into the lower levels. The underworld. It's like, okay, you just repeated yourself again. But, like, this- That seems to be what all this is building up to. They're just hyping up the lower levels. Why? 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 We've been to the lower levels before. Seriously! This is so dumb! Yes, I don't know I don't know what to turn this into! Yeah, we right? can probably like, just get rid of it! Get rid you just of it! Cut it. Out nothing! It's like I mean like in Lightsaber Lost, what they do is yeah, they just show Anakin and Ahsoka showing up in the lower levels and then Anakin's just like, Oh by the way, I guess I should brief you on what we're doing here. So like why don't they do that here? Like just you know show them flying into the lower levels and then as they're getting out of the 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 thing in like another second here then he's like hey by the way i guess i should brief you on what we're doing here. <laughs> or like yeah kind of like we suggested for lightsaber lost right like in this case it's a slightly better because ahsoka's dialogue does imply that she does know what they're going there for 
But then they hash it out all over again like it's the first time. So she's like, shouldn't we go to the last place Boba Fett was seen? So she, you know, she knows that they're looking for Boba Fett. And then he's like, no, no, we're going to go here. And then it's like, oh, here, by the way, Ahsoka, that other person in the hologram was this person. Oh, she's a this. Yeah, she's a that. And it's like, okay, so does, does Ahsoka know what's going on? What you guys are doing or not? Why is Ahsoka only ever briefed? when you're getting there. Uh, no wonder she's so useless. She's never prepared. Maybe we could start the scene off with Ahsoka saying, so this bounty hunter, Aura Singh, do you think she's an associate of Jango Fed? Yeah, and then Plo Koon could be like, that would make sense. That would explain how, how Boba Fett got you know, caught up with her or, or something like that. And um, yeah, our... our, our idea was that he says you know so we're, we're going to the the last place that uh you know boba fett was was seen you know if, if we don't pick up anything there then um we can go to you know some of the places that aura singh and, and her associates are known to to frequent and we'll see if we can pick up any information there because that that idea of oh you know you go to their frequent hangouts and then you know potentially find something that that's a good idea yeah but the whole, like, no, we're not going to look in the last place he was, because what could we possibly learn there? <laughs> yeah, why does he have, like, a full cloak? And she doesn't. Because, yeah, no, again, like, her Padawan her full cloak. Because is... it's so stupid that, yeah, she just walks around the lower levels with her Padawan raid hanging out, and it's like, okay, people will know you're a Jedi, you moron! And I mean, like, it's kind of dumb, because, like, Plo Koon's got his face covered there. Yeah, you can hardly see Plo Koon at all. Like, he's not just wearing, like, a cloak. It's just, like, he's just completely invisible. And then she, like, sticks out like a sore thumb. She's wearing brighter colors, and she's, you know... Yeah, she's not wearing a, a, a cloak, and her, her cloak is smaller. Like, his is down to his ankles. Hers is the, the length of her miniskirt. And, like, if you, if you remember Obi-Wan and, and Qui-Gon from The Phantom Menace, yeah, they're both wearing, the, like, big cloak long robe like same brown tinge right like so it's it's like why can't they just be like that's the same what, it's what's dumb. the big deal here how many times do they say Django fett in like a two minute span because they're saying it again <laughs> and then they, they literally were just saying that like oh we're gonna go to the places that aura sing frequents because we're trying to follow her because she's with Boba and now they're like, oh, here, we're going to this place that Jango Fett used to frequent. And he's been dead for how many years now? Well, I guess it's just the first year of the Clone Wars. So yeah, maybe wouldn't be super long. But still, you're not following the dead person. You're following the live person. You know where Jango Fett ended up. Yes, it's logical that Aura Singh would frequent places that Jango Fett frequented because obviously they were associates, but why not skip the middleman? All you do is cha change the name. Done. We must be cautious. He's not there anymore! Why do you need to be cautious? He's dead! Does that make any sense? Ah, oh, this dead person used to frequent this area. We must be cautious. <laughs> <laughs> like it would make more sense to be like, oh, you know, like criminals frequent this area, or bounty hunters frequent this area, or like Aura Singh is known to frequent this area, and we're looking for her, so we should be cautious. But instead, it's like, ah, oh, yes, this this dead bounty hunter used to frequent this area. We must be cautious. <laughs> like, so often their lines just don't make sense no. when you think about them back to back, and they are back to back. Like, I know it's super nitpicky, but like. What is this? Bad writing, I believe that's what it's called. We've now spent two minutes of runtime on absolutely nothing. Literally two minutes setting up, oh, they're looking for Aura Singh. She's a bounty hunter, like Jango Fett was a bounty hunter, and now Boba Fett, his son, is with bounty hunter Aura Singh. Literally, one of the most basic Which rules stuff of writing, that was do not waste your audience's in the first time. Stuff that was covered in the first 30 seconds by the narrator! And we have to spend another two minutes of runtime on it! Why? 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 Because, like, I know in our previous fixes, there's been a few times where I'm like, what we're saying, what we're suggesting, typically would probably add to the runtime. But if you cut out crap like this, and, like, quite often we are cutting stuff out, like, I think overall, maybe our episodes would, on average, be maybe a little longer, but, like, 
I don't think they would be twice as long. I, I think, you know, they would either be the same runtime or maybe add five minutes, right? Because obviously you, you would polish the ideas and, and find ways to kind of like get them in there without um, prolonging things too much. Well, I hope we have better luck here. This is the fifth scum bucket drinking hole we've been to. Yes. And this time, try to be more subtle. You have adopted many of your master's ways, including a lack of subtlety. Her attitude when they get off. Oh, this is the fifth scum bucket drinking hole we've been to. And like, again... Like it's they're just trying to establish. Okay, it's her they, fault. She's whining about. Oh, we have to go to another one and do this all over again. It is her fault. It is her yeah, own fault that they have to do that. But it's also like we in our videos that are are, are going to be coming out over the next couple months. I, I talk about how in Lightsaber Lost, she was supposed to learn patience, and here they are trying to subtly extract information a technique which takes patience and she's clearly showing impatience both in the implied suggestion from their dialogue that she's just been trying to rush through things she's just been making a scene and her attitude oh this is the fifth one five isn't that big a number honestly i just get rid of this dialogue too because like there's so much wrong with it like her attitude, Plo Koon throwing Anakin under the bus. Yeah. Like, give me a break. We don't need this. Just cut it out. And, um, I mean, like, again, if, if you made the, 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 the earlier scene shorter or, or whatever, like, I feel like you could fit all of this into the, the earlier scene. Like what we said, where, um... They're just like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go check out places, you know, we're gonna go to the blast place that Boba Fett was seen, and if we can't find him there, we're gonna go to, you know, some places that Aura Singh frequented and and see if we can pick up their trail, right? Like so we already know they're following them. This is what they're gonna do. They have plan B all ready to go. And then yeah, you could just have some some quick dialogue here um that's revealing that yeah, this isn't the last place they've seen Boba Fett. This is, yeah, maybe the third place that Aura Singh was, was known to frequent. So they've they've already been, you know, going around trying to gather information and failing. Not because Ahsoka's being awful, but because they just couldn't find information there. What if like, I don't know why them? they chose to have it. Well, no, I do know why. Because they, they, they chose to have it that Ahsoka was messing up the last ones so that she could have this moment of growth here. Okay, but she was already supposed to have had this growth yeah. in Lightsaber Lost. Yeah. Right? Like, she's just supposed to be applying what she learned there to a new situation. If anything, you could maybe have it that, like, you know, she's just been kind of accompanying Plo Koon, but she hasn't been doing much and basically what i'm getting at is that um instead of having plo Koon remind her of the lesson she already learned she remembers it right she's she's waiting for plo Koon, and instead of just standing there doing nothing she's like hey well you know like i remember what master St obviously she wouldn't say this but you'd, you'd have some sort of um hint that she's remembering back to lightsaber lost she uses what he taught master sunube taught her there or you could have it that you know plo Koon suggests um you know because yeah in lightsaber lost she she walked around the lower levels like she owned the place but i think we kind of changed that and so here you know she could still be kind of uncomfortable in the lower levels i mean like they're a sketchy place she's a young girl so she kind of you know kind of sticks close to Plo Koon and maybe he suggests here like you know why not instead of you know standing by me this time you go see what you can you know kind of over here elsewhere and um she's just like well it's really loud like I don't, I don't think I'll be able to really hear anything he's like you know no no you just you know, focus and and pay attention to 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 your instincts or your feelings whatever right and then she's just like oh you know master master Sanupe kind of taught me how to 
um, to to do something like that or whatever. And he's like, yeah, well, there you go. I, I don't know. Like, I'm just doing this off the fly. I'm more going for like the ideas of the dialogue rather than what it would actually be. But like, that's kind of what I would go for. That Plo Koon kind of encourages her to 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 take a step away to um and uh, contribute um as well not that she what she's been doing is it hasn't been contributing but that like she could contribute more if she you know confidently stepped out and and chose to to use what she's been taught so far i was gonna suggest for uh, for the previous places that they visited um, maybe we could throw in a bit of a montage there, because this show never uses montages for some reason. The only montages they use are for the opening scenes. Yeah, it's so dumb. Make use of montages! Like, I wouldn't want to see them, like, every single episode. But yeah, for something like this, where you're, um, you want to establish that, yeah, they've been going from place to place, but you don't want to show each place, obviously, then, yeah, use a 10 to 30 second montage. You spent two minutes doing literally nothing. Why not do a 15 second montage? Yeah. Just try to blend in. Listen. You may be surprised what people reveal when they have been drinking. Why is this the first time he's saying this to her? Yeah, also, it's so show. dumb. Right, like, why didn't he say that to her on, like, I don't know, the third time? Or the second time? Or the first time? Or the first time! I yeah, it, j- just try to blend well. in. So obviously she hasn't been doing that. Listen. So obviously she hasn't been doing that. You'd be surprised what you can find out, you know, what, what, what people will reveal when they've been drinking. How does she not know this if you've been this if this is the fifth scum bucket drinking hole that you've been to? Because this show is dumb, that's why. It's it's like basic things. Trying to blend in and listening. Stuff that, why does she need to be told this? Common sense. It's a thing. Oh, been a while since we had one of you down here. Aren't you a bit busy with your war to be bothering with the likes of us? We are never too busy for the citizens of the Republic. That's a lie! I love how he says, be subtle, try to blend in. And then he slaps his Just lightsaber listen. down on the table. And then he slaps his lightsaber down on the counter. And then tells a blatant lie. Like, Plo Koon is a good guy. And we have been shown that, like, he cares about the clones and, and stuff like that. But, like, we haven't seen any Jedi, even Plo Koon genuinely caring, taking time for the citizens of the Republic. We, like, never see them on on Coruscant. And, I mean, like, the Republic isn't just Coruscant. And so in that sense, you could say, oh, yeah, they care about the citizens of the Republic. But it's like, for the most part, we we see them in, in places where they're just fighting the Separatists or, like... It doesn't seem to be about the, the citizens of the Republic as much as it is about just warring, which is what the guy just said, right? You're just busy with your war. Because well, Ryloth is technically part of the Republic, yes? Because if, if it is, I mean, like, technically, then, you know, the uh, storm over Ryloth and, and, and that kind of arc there is technically them caring for the the citizens of the Republic, right? Like, getting them out of the grip of of the Separatists. But it's not personal in the sense that, you know, we came to bring you relief even though there were no Separatists here. It's more like we came to to get rid of the Separatists and, you know, we brought along relief so that, you know, once they're gone, you can, you know, get back on your feet because like um padme's friend the guy with the starry eyes uncle Anno. yeah yeah like he, he almost turns her over to the separatists because his people are starving and the republic's not doing anything about it yeah this, One episode, of those this episode things. is just making plo Koon look terrible i think it's bothering me not because it's being said by a jedi but because it's being said by plo Koon, who we've seen is better than that. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, if, if that came out of, of the mouth of Mace Windu, 
or someone like that, I could kind of understand it, right? Like, he, he has this mentality, but like... Because, like, the Jedi are flawed. And they do think that they're doing good things when they're, they're, they're coming up short. Like, there's no denying that. But, like, to show someone like Plo Koon, who very much has been more grounded than the others, it's like, why? Yeah, no, this makes me very unhappy. And then, and then they literally have this, like, skin-tight, clad, gyrating female in the foreground of, of a kid show. Wow, so wholesome. <laughs> I'm not getting anywhere. Oh look, impatient. Try to... Kind of more plot convenience though, that she only has to listen to four conversations in total before she finds the one she's looking for. It is and it isn't. I mean, like there is the, the rule of three in, in writing where you don't want to, to, to make your audience sit through 20 different failures before you know the character finally succeeds so so typically the rule of three is kind of the idea that like if you see them fail twice on the third time they succeed and it's just so that like it doesn't drag or it doesn't get redundant or right like you see enough that it's like okay they're not succeeding on the first try but it's not so much that it's kind of like, okay, when is this story going to get going? In that sense, if you're going to be be showing it, like, like with the thing with them making stops, then yeah, all they're doing is saying, oh, this is the fifth stop, right? Why not make it a bigger number? This is the seventh stop. This is the tenth stop, right? If you're just gonna say it, then yeah, make why not make it a bigger number? So it's like, hey, We've been at this for hours, maybe even days, and we're ju we're just keeping at it because we've got to find something. But if you're if you're if you're actually like showing it in this case, then yeah, you you don't want to show ten different conversations of blithering nothingness objectifying women before she overhears the the crucial information. What bothers me is that yeah, she's been doing absolutely nothing. At the last four stops, in fact, she's been hindering Plo Koon's attempts. And then her first time, oh, I'm going to step up and actually do something here. She immediately succeeds. She's just listening for information for the first time. And she immediately succeeds at finding the crucial piece needed to find exactly where they are. If you had it, um, like we suggested, where she was a bit reserved you know the buddy system kind of thing right like she she's there to to help Okun um if if needed you know rather than he's going into the low lower level by himself or you know kind of like a tag along like oh i'm going to learn how this kind of thing is done by watching you right and so then she kind of watches him for the first several times and then he's like okay now it's 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 your turn. Take a step away from me. Try to do it on your own. You've seen how I've been doing it. You give it a try, right? So then maybe, yeah, he goes to the one side near the counter, just orders a, a drink or something, to, tries to blend in and, you know, just starts to listen for stuff. And then she goes to the other side of the bar. And instead of being like, oh, I'm not getting anything after 30 seconds, um, she's just kind of looking around and then you know she she leans against a wall or something trying to blend in and then yeah does her her close her eyes and constantly you know listen but like like master plo was doing or um as i suggested earlier you know maybe she makes a comment about what master sunube taught her or something like i don't mind either way if, if she's like okay like master plo was doing or if she she makes a clear reference to lightsaber loss that she's like drawing from there but either way it's you know she's putting into practice what she is observing and learning from her masters i wouldn't mind then that she's the one who who gets the information right now plo Koon just looks dumb because he's trying to chat up the bartender while the conversation the information that he needs he, if he just listened, like he just told Ahsoka to do, he'd be getting it. What's her name? Hope it's not who I think it is. He was working with Aura Singh. She's bad news. 
Ah, that's her, all right. She's the boss's ex. So, from the other side of the room, she hears them perfectly clearly because she's using her Jedi abilities. And then she walks over to their table and just starts listening normally and then starts backing up into them so she can hear better. Why didn't she stay on the other side of the room and just use her Jedi abilities to listen to the rest of the conversation and they would have no idea? Good question. Why don't Jedi use their Jedi abilities? Why is she being stupid for the sake of plot? Oh yeah, because she's a plot device, not a character. Wow. Like, this entire sequence is completely pointless. All you would have to do is they, they say their bit, oh, you know, are you talking about who I think you're talking about? Uh, yeah, you know, or saying, oh, she's the boss's ex. There's always trouble when she shows up. And then, you know, they, they start talking about Hondo or and, and his long list of, you know, troublesome girlfriends or, you know, and so she's just like, okay, the information I needed, it, I've, I've, I've found out their, you know, conversation is continuing in, in an uninteresting, uh, unimportant direction. So I'm going to go tell Plo Koon what I overheard. Why do they have to have this where she's stupid and so she messes everything up and then Plo Koon has to save her and then instead of getting scolded for being stupid, Plo Koon's like, oh, you found something now? Good job! Uh, it would have been better. It would have shown some action in there because... Oh, this is a kid show. The kids are gonna get bored if nothing interesting's happening. Stand down. You can't take us all, Jedi. Would you like to try and prove your theory? Drinks on the house. And like, again, why does Ahsoka get that moment? She goes from being completely stupid to being smart. They do this all the time. Ahsoka creates a problem so that she can fix it and be the hero. I feel like Plo Koon could have just stepped in and just used a Jedi mind trick. Ah, be leave the kid alone. Uh, you know, they 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 were just you know looking you know, to 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 pick up some some you know spare coins to you know right here, kid. Have have some 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 uh, some credits. Oh, here you guys have some credits to just you know leave the kid alone. Um, I feel like this is more of making Plo Koon look awful. Cause yeah, because he immediately jumps to the hostile response. Yeah. Intimidate and show of force. Right? Like, you know, that's not who he that's is. Not the Jedi way. Right? Like, what if they had taken him up on it? What if they had decided to tr tr try and prove their theory? I bet you Plo Koon and Ahsoka would have won, but they would have just slaughtered a whole bunch of people needlessly. Ultimately, it's one of those episodes where. It's just a lot of little problems that could be easily fixed by just, you know, wiping the slate clean and using that time in a completely different way. Like, in some of our other ones, all we're doing is like, you know, oh, well, the dialogue itself is okay, we just want to change the tone. Or, you know, we, we kind of like um, these lines here, but, you know, we'll change what Ahsoka says or what this person, you know, we'll, we'll switch who says what line, stuff like that, right? But in this case, it's almost just like filler. It's just scenes that are happening for the sake of happening, yeah, and there's no weird. there's no strength behind them. They're just like, okay, we want to show that they're looking for Aura. Okay, so we'll spend two minutes establishing that they're looking for Aura. And then we'll spend five minutes here where like yeah how long has it been it's been about three minutes so far it's, yeah so it's it's three to four minutes in total and it's trying to show oh look ahsoka is learning and and growing and oh she's so smart and oh by the way action and tension and right because like i think you're absolutely right like this is a slower episode but they're like Oh no, we can't let children watch, you know, a, a drama unfold. There has to be tension and fighting and it's like, why? Why not just tell a good story? Baloney's allergic to good stories. Different episodes can have different tones, different beats, different feels to them. Yeah, absolutely. 
Especially when you're doing an anthology. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so much creative freedom in an anthology. And they just, like, nope. We're gonna do the stupidest things. And. Felodi is the literal embodiment of the Pirates of the Caribbean line. I love opportunities. I love to wave as them as they pass by. Not very subtle. I was being subtle. No, you weren't. Interesting result. I heard about a murder. A murder Aura Singh recently committed. Well done, little Soka. So, so yeah, they, they have him kind of be grumpy, like, Oh, you ruined everything. Like, he almost seems childish. And he's being hypocritical. And he's being hypocritical. Because you're abs- Yeah. Yeah, because he- Like we just said, he could have avoided that confrontation in a subtle way, but- he instead chose to reveal himself as a Jedi and make it hostile, and then he's giving her the cold shoulder. You know, this this episode just ruins Plo Koon. But yeah, the other thing I wanted to say was, yeah, like, after Plo Koon gives a a Ahsoka the cold shoulder, and he's like, oh, you didn't do a very good job, and then she's oh, but I did, I did, see, I figured all this stuff out. And then, oh, oh, good job! And it's just like... Yeah, his, his re reaction just seems so childish because he just like, Oh, grumpy, grumpy. Oh, you, okay, you, you, you did what I want, so now I'm happy. And it just makes him look bad. And again, it's no consequences for Ahsoka. She doesn't have to deal with the problem she created because he immediately bails her out. And then, yeah, he's a little sulky about it, but as soon as she reveals, Oh, by the way, I found out all the crucial information we needed to know then, oh, nothing but praise. Yeah, she caused a problem, but the writers had already set up her reward. Remember, patience. Which, you know, again, his, like, all he says to Ahsoka is, be patient. Which e even more confirms that her behavior earlier in this episode was her behaving impatiently. When the last episode that she featured predominantly in because like she was more of a side character in bounty hunters she was supposed to have learned patience and in this episode it's just impatience and in bounty hunters we we also saw more impatience but that one chronologically came before lightsaber lost so if we fix that behavior from earlier then we wouldn't need to include that line i don't think like, I, I don't know if they have a plan going into this. I don't know what Plo Koon is hoping to do or how Ahsoka was briefed ahead of time or what. Bad mood, Jedi. This will cost you. All I did was sit down. It was supposed to be Windu. It's like, well, well, what if Windu's waiting outside? What if Plo Koon just went in first, right? Like, you didn't specify Windu had to, to come alone. You just said he had to face Boba. I wanted Windu. What are you doing here? See, that's the other thing. Boba's like, come and face me. And then his plan was to pop out from behind him and shoot him in the back of the head. Like, because it kind of makes sense, right? Because yeah, Boba wouldn't stand a chance against Windu. And Boba's not looking for an apology. He's looking for revenge. So in that sense, it absolutely makes sense that he'd be like, come and face me. And then he would just shoot him in the back of the head. But it's also like, well, what was Boba hiding behind there? Like when we see- He just kind of comes out of the shadows. Like- You, you, you think a Jedi wouldn't- You would have seen him. Anyone walking into that room would have seen him. Yeah, and like, you're dealing with a Jedi. You don't think maybe they'd sense that you're hiding there in the shadows? Jedi don't know how to use Jedi powers in this show, remember? But other people don't know that! Actually, it wouldn't surprise me. Ahsoka has been shown to seem to know that she's a character in a story. And that she has, you know, plot armor. But, uh, so it's, it's possible that other characters know these things as well. Execute the hostages if I give the word. Why doesn't she just say, execute the hostages? Windu didn't come. At the same time, though, if she executes the hostages now, she's giving up her leverage. I guess, but they've got, like, two hostages left, so she could say, execute one of the hostages and, and you know, and wait till I give the word for the other. Because then she's 
she's in control because now he's gonna be like, wait, 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 wait. Whereas this just, you know, puts her nowhere. I am prepared to kill you, the hostages, whatever it takes to get what Boba wants. Yeah, and I think we mentioned in the reaction series, like, what is her motivation here? It's not like, I'm ready to kill you and the hostages and whatever it takes to, you know, get revenge for Django because, you know, like, he was my friend. No, it's to get what Boba wants. I really want this eight-year-old kid to be happy. <laughs> and I'm ready to sacrifice everything so that he can get what he wants. And, like, you hear Ahsoka's sneaking in. And, like, all we know is that Plo Koon told her to be patient. There was no semblance of a plan given to the yeah. audience. It, it wasn't, oh, you know, remember the plan. It was remember patience. So it's like, okay, so is she just supposed to patiently wait outside? Like, or that's like... exactly what I, I'd infer from that. So the fact that she's sneaking in makes her look, again, impatient. Yeah, but it almost seems like this is the plan because, yeah, in sounds in a second, like what you want. yeah, she sounds like more like what you want. And then, yeah, Ahsoka just jumps out and attacks Aura and starts, you know, threatening her. Okay, was, was this was this part of the plan? Like, what's going on here? I mean, like, it makes sense that they're like, okay, well, Aura's gonna have some sort of way of communicating to to kill the hostages, but they don't necessarily know that. What if they just had the hostages there in the corner of the room? And Bosk just like, okay. And it just like, and how much does, like, at the beginning of this episode, Ahsoka didn't know anything about Aura Singh, and now she knows that the stick out of her head is a radio antenna, and if she just cuts that, then Aura Singh can't do anything? Yeah, no, what the heck? This is, again, Ahsoka flip-flopping between being stupid and being super smart. And, like, it's one of those things that's like, okay, well, maybe he could have told her off screen. But, like, why don't we get shown that? Or why not have it that at the beginning, she's talking as if she knows who Aura Singh is so that we get the impression that they have talked about this off screen. That they have, you know, briefed her on what they're up against. Right? You don't necessarily have to show the briefing, but if you have her talking like she has been briefed, maybe have her like ask a clarifying question or something to show that like, yeah, I've just learned about this recently, right? I'm not like some know-it-all. It's just like, I got briefed on this. Oh wait, I, I meant, you know, like, can I just ask this question to like clarify this one thing? I don't remember that or what, like, you know, so that it shows that yes, they have talked about this. She doesn't know it all by herself. She has to, you know, ask some, some questions sometimes to just kind of clear something up, be on the same page. But like, yeah, you, and then it's it's clear all, all of those things without having to like actually show them sitting her down and be like, okay, Ahsoka, now we want to tell you about Aura Singh. And, but like, yeah, this way, this way, she doesn't know anything and then we don't see her learn anything and then she just knows everything. How backwards is it? That this episode has segments that completely wastes the audience time and we're not given the information that we actually need. Isn't, isn't that TCW in a nutshell? Yeah, literally. All they had to do was just start out the episode with Ahsoka's dialogue implying that she is knowledgeable about Aura Singh because she's been briefed on who this person is and, you know, what's going on and then her actions here would make more sense right but there's there's no indication that this is a plan there's no indication that she would have any understanding of aura singh's weak point that she's not just using a radio transmitter on her wrist and maybe you need to cut off her hand instead of just flicking the antenna on her head and like and then again why is ahsoka being so like, hostile and, like, threatening Aura, like, to, to get Boba. Let her go! No chance. She won't do it, Boba. She's not like you. She's right. I'm not a murderer. And that is such BS. She is screwing over Plo Koon more than anything else here. There's no guarantee that when she jumped out and threatened Aura, 
that Boba wouldn't just pull the trigger. Yeah, and she's she like, I'm not admits, like you. Oh, I'm not a murderer. Oh, okay, I'll just kill your friend here then. And then we'll kill you. Because you just Yeah, if you think he's a murderer, and he's got a, a gun to your friend's head, right? Like, what are you doing? She's being a complete idiot. But I want justice. We are justice. And uh, again. I can't let you die! You won't have to. Okay, how on earth did Ahsoka survive oh. that? Bomb! And both Jedi just stand there and say, Bomb. Instead of force pushing it away. Yeah, no. Or Use the force! Jumping. Oh! Yeah, like, I you die, you won't have to, wink. And Plo Koon is just like, I'm, I'm just gonna let this play out, see where this goes. You know, like, she completely gave herself away. And no one reacted. Yeah. And, like, what is Ahsoka's role in this? Like, literally, again, it's just a show of force. Let's use intimidation to solve our problems instead of, you know, peacekeeping tactics. Uh. Um, yeah, I, like, when they're walking in, I would maybe have Plo Koon say, remember the plan, instead of remember patience. Would we have it that, um, because, like, we, we don't like Aura's whole thing. We could keep her first two lines the same. Where she's like, oh, bad move, Jedi, this will cost you. And then Boba comes in with the, oh, who, what are you doing here? I wanted Windu. Like, that, all that but can stay Why does Boba reveal him. himself? It's not the guy he wants. Why doesn't he stay hidden? Actually, that could be interesting, because if he hangs back, then he could intercept Ahsoka if and when she comes in. We can have it that, like, they're... They have a plan, but it actually goes awry. So she tries sneaking in, but Boba catches her and he holds the gun to her head. So what would Ahsoka's part of the plan be though? That's exactly the problem. It's It doesn't make any sense. Like with the way Plo Koon approached it, it doesn't make any sense for her to come in at all. And it's like, she takes out the radio, but like, if Aura had been smart, it would already be too late. Yeah, exactly. Oh, this is so dumb. Right? Like, the only reason that Ahsoka's actions do any good is because Aura's stupid. And so all Ahsoka manages to do is, is escalate the situation. And yes, she prevents Aura from, from giving the, the final word. But then it's like, Plo Koon seems to want to negotiate something here, and now that's out of the picture. Because you just escalated the situation past that. Right? And and Aura seemed open to negotiation because she didn't say, okay, just kill somebody. She was like, you know, hold that thought, be ready to kill somebody, but I'm gonna hear this person out. And then Ahsoka just... Maybe That's we could have seemed. Ahsoka force pull Aura's earpiece away from her. I guess. It's on the wrong side. It's on their left side and, and uh, okay. Ahsoka that's, comes from that's her right. That's a simple fix. You just switch it to her right. I don't know. What if... Uh, cause, yeah, because this is the, the problem with, with the whole thing. Because like, Boba doesn't actually want to hurt anybody. So then he doesn't want to escalate the situation. If you have three people who don't want to escalate the situation... Then the situation would reasonably not escalate. Yeah, I mean, like, one person can cause... Like, because she's kind of holding the cards, right? So, like we said, all she has to do is say, okay, Bosk, it's not Windu. Kill the first hostage, right? So she's showing, like, the situation has become more tense because she's willing to just pull the trigger. And then, yeah, it's like, okay, we've got to get her communication with Bosk disconnected so that she can't give the word and then that, that pushes things in our favor. Oh, he... help! Help me! It's amazing that Plokoon actually uses the force though. And then she's very clearly trying to kill Aura here. 
And again, Ahsoka's right beside an explosion and is completely unfazed. Everyone else is locked out, but she's A-OK. Yep. So dumb. And somehow she holds on to nothing. Again, trying to kill her. Survives that. And then again, like, she's very clearly trying to kill this person, and then that person dies and she's like, oh, they are dead. And this is all after she was like, I'm not a murderer. Yeah! Yeah! And then proceeds to try her hardest to be a murderer. Yeah. Wow. But like, I just... I don't know exactly how to kind of fix it without completely changing how the the entire confrontation scenario goes. Okay, so Plo Koon walks into the room or threatens to kill the so the hostages. <laughs> the sausages? sausages? The sausages will die Not and sausages. I will eat them with ketchup. Okay, okay, so Aura threatens to kill the hostages. Plo Koon's like, no, wait. She's like, oh, okay, and I'm, I'm listening. And then Plo Koon distracts her. Ahsoka sneaks in. She pulls the earpiece away from Aura. And then Aura freaks out, pulls a gun on Plo Koon. And then Boba comes out of hiding, uh, pulls a gun on Ahsoka. I probably have Aura flip the table into um, Plo, okay. maybe knock him out. She makes a run for it. She just like, Boba, come on. Boba doesn't maybe Ahsoka really know grabs what to do Boba? Because he's kind of in a bad spot and he doesn't want to kill Ahsoka, so he kind of hesitates. And then Ahsoka kind of uses that to get the better of him. She runs after Aura. Boba tries to run after them too, but then Plo Koon wakes up and force pulls him. You could have it that, yeah, Boba hesitates with Ahsoka, so Ahsoka gets the better of him, she's holding on to him. I would have it that Plo Koon didn't, like, get, like, knocked out, but he's just, you know, a bit dazed, you know, getting out of the everything that Aura kind of threw at him. And then um, Plo Koon tells Ahsoka to go after Aura. You could just have it that he just, you know, you follow her, right? I I've got him. Ahsoka's just following Aura and not like trying to like attack her but you could have it that maybe aura like pulls out a, a, um, a blaster starts shooting at her so then ahsoka yeah like pulls out her lightsaber to to deflect right so you still got like a, a bit of action there right and it makes sense that aura would be trying to do that so Plo Koon finally gets the coordinates and then he's like oh ahsoka you know we got the coordinates you needed to go here right and then um aura's like darn it tricks up yeah she just tries to get away i'd have it that ahsoka focuses her energy on disabling the ship rather than attacking and trying to kill aura yeah i would maybe just she cuts the wing off and then she like cuts a hole in the the glass there just so that it's like yeah, you can't you can't go out into the vacuum of space. Or maybe she she goes through the glass into the control panel. Yeah. She uh, attacks the control panel and then jumps away. And then Aura's like, ah, control panel's not working. And then she crashes. Cause yeah, just having Ahsoka just be like, die, die, is just like, what the heck? What is wrong with you? It's all good, though, because she's not a murderer. No, she's what the Jedi should be. Oh, yeah. Paragon like, of virtue. Psycho right killing here. machines. Mm -hmm. Woo -hoo. The only thing is that when Boba pulls a gun on Ahsoka, does Ahsoka just stand there? Or does, like, everything just kind of happen really fast at that point? Like, I'd have him kind of, like, force her closer to the table and take the earpiece away from her, obviously. Ahsoka Maybe Ahsoka just crushes the earpiece when she takes it. And then, yeah, Boba can hold her at gunpoint, push her closer to the table, and then be like, you know, what do we do now? And Aura is just like, you know what to do. And then, you know, she, yeah, flips the table or, or whatever. And then she's like, you know, just, just, you know, take her out. Let's go, Boba. But then, yeah, Boba hesitates, etc. 
There you go. And I'm pretty, pretty, pretty sure that Ahsoka doesn't say anything else. I, I think she's just there. Would we want her to say anything? Because Anakin shows up right at the end there. I don't know. Maybe we could like have a moment between her and Anakin. I don't know. We, this would be, I think we like, did want to Anakin... address the fact that when Ahsoka got around to killing someone, like actually killing someone for the first time, then we'd actually make something out of it rather than just glossing it over like the writers do mm -hmm. so like or we know we as the audience know that aura isn't dead because of later events but she would have reason to believe that she just killed someone yeah she like, wasn't trying to but like, then directly because of her actions someone is dead now yeah and it's also the first time she's seen Anakin up again since like the past episode so she sh yeah should be like making some sort of comment like oh you're okay like or like if you if you have her tone be like oh, I see you're feeling better and uh, he's like yeah I can't keep me down and then kind of realizes that she's not as as like chipper and he's like hey hey what's what's the matter and she's just like, you know, I just killed someone. I mean, it's not like the first, first time because yeah, we had in Storm over Ryloth, even though she obeyed orders right away, that, um, you know, things kind of fell apart, but she still kind of took that really hard because we changed it in Storm over Ryloth. So it was not her actions that caused it. It just, you know, happened and she kind of took it all on herself when she, she shouldn't have. And so in this case, it, it was, her direct actions and so then he can kind of be like words 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 wordsy you words you did what you had to do essentially yeah and that that actually works pretty well for anakin's character that that's what he would say that like you know you just you did what you had to do because she says that about him in brain invaders that like oh you know my master he'll do whatever he has to do. i think we 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 changed that but like again it's one of those lines that they have ahsoka say but like we, we never really see him talk that way to Ahsoka. Like, yeah, exactly. But yeah, if if you actually have a line where he's like, you know, you did what you had to do, and especially yeah, given his character, that's what he ends up doing. Like he's like, I gotta save Padme, and I gotta do whatever it takes. So he does what he feels he has to do. And like same in the instance where he he kills Dooku. Like he kind of knows this is wrong, but Palpatine's all he's like, too oh, dangerous to be kept what alive. You had to do. He's like, oh yeah, okay, I, I did what I had to do. Yeah, I would have it that, like, you can see that, like, that's not enough for Ahsoka, but it does kind of help take the weight off. Yeah. Like, it still bothers her, but, um, she's, she's gonna try and just, like, you know, rationalize it, justify it. And then and we can have the exchange between Boba and Windu, where Windu's like, screw you, kid! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, you know, I'm just looking at the transcripts here. I see now I've done terrible things, but you started it when you murdered my father. I'll never forgive you. Hmm, well, you're going to have to. Take him away. So next episode is season three, episode four, Sphere of Influence. Um, actually, I was thinking what we should do is we should do uh, episodes six and seven first because chronologically they come first. And that, that's the only Who other two episodes. About chronological order. Overrated. Yeah, it is. But I mean, like, it's only three episodes and we already accidentally got the first one out of chronological order. So I'm just like, there's only two more. We got to at least the, like the, the next two. Academy one, right? Yeah, episode six is the Academy. That's the other oh, reason no. why I kind of want to do it, because I want to get to that rather... stupid episode. Anyways, what are we going to say she's learned from this? I would say the lesson of patience is being reiterated here. Like, from we changed it so that patience, she's recalling um, Sanube's teachings. I think our fixed version is less about patience and more about, yeah, just utilizing her her jedi senses because it's it's about you know listening sensing feeling right rather than like and she does have to be patient to do those things but i think that that even makes it better you know as the next kind of like building block after lightsaber loss like okay she learned patience there and now we get to see what she's able to accomplish with her jedi abilities now that she is combining it with ha her her lessons in patience. Oh, and she has to 
has to deal with being directly responsible for finger quotations killing Horacing. This has been Lethal Tractor. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like. Maybe subscribe to the channel so you can see more content. Leave a comment down below. Check out our Patreon. See you in the next one. Be awesome. Yeah. And remember, quotes are for dumb people who can't think of something intelligent to say on their own. Yep, there you go.